Fencing traces its roots to the development of swordsmanship for duels and self-defense. The oldest surviving treatise on Western fencing is the Royal Armory's Ms. I.33, also known as the Tower Manuscript, written ca.1300 in present-day Germany, which discusses the usage of the arming sword together with the buckler. It was followed by a number of treatises, primarily from Germany and Italy, with the oldest surviving Italian treatise being Fior di Battaglia by Fiori dei Liberi, written ca. 1400. However, because they were written for the context of a nylee jewel with a primary focus on archaic weapons such as the arming sword, longsword, or poleaxe, these older treatises do not really stand in continuity with modern fencing. From the 16th century onward, the Italian school of fencing would be dominated by the Bolgonese or Dardi school of fencing, named after its founder, Filippo Dardi, a Bolognese fencing master and professor of geometry at the University of Bologna. Unlike the previous traditions, the Bolognese school would primarily focus on the sidesword being either used alone or in combination with a buckler, a cape, a parrying dagger, or dual wielded with another sidesword, though some Bolognese masters, such as Achille Marizzo, would still cover the usage of the two-handed greatsword or spadoni. The Bolognese school would eventually spread outside of Italy and lay the foundation for modern fencing, eclipsing both older Italian and German traditions. This was partially due to the German school's focus on archaic weapons such as the longsword, but also due to a general decline in fencing within Germany. The mechanics of modern fencing originated in the 18th century in an Italian school of fencing of the Renaissance, and under their influence, were improved by the French school of fencing. The Spanish school of fencing stagnated and was replaced by the Italian and French schools. The shift towards fencing as a sport rather than as military training happened from the mid-18th century, and was led by Domenico Angelo, who established a fencing academy, Angelo's School of Arms, in Carlisle House, Soho, London in 1763. There, he taught the aristocracy the fashionable art of swordsmanship. His school was run by three generations of his family and dominated the art of European fencing for almost a century. He established the essential rules of posture and footwork that still govern modern sport fencing, although his attacking and parrying methods were still much different from current practice. Although he intended to prepare his students for real combat, he was the first fencing master to emphasize the health and sporting benefits of fencing more than its use as a killing art, particularly in his influential book Le Col des Armes, the school of fencing published in 1763. Basic conventions were collated and set down during the 1880s by the French fencing master Camille Prévost. It was during this time that many officially recognized fencing associations began to appear in different parts of the world, such as the Amateur Fencers League of America was founded in 1891, the Amateur Fencing Association of Great Britain in 1902, and the Fédération Nationale des Sociétés de Scream et Salles d'Armes de France in 1906. The first regularized fencing competition was held at the inaugural Grand Military Tournament and Assault at Arms in 1880, held at the Royal Agricultural Hall, in Islington in June. The tournament featured a series of competitions between army officers and soldiers. Each bout was fought for five hits and the foils were pointed with black to aid the judges. The Amateur Gymnastic and Fencing Association drew up an official set of fencing regulations in 1896. Fencing was part of the Olympic Games in the summer of 1896. Saber events have been held at every Summer Olympics. Foil events have been held at every Summer Olympics except 1908. Epe events have been held at every Summer Olympics except in the summer of 1896 because of unknown reasons. Starting with Epe in 1933, side judges were replaced by the Laurent Pagan electrical scoring apparatus, with an audible tone and a red or green light indicating when a touch landed. Foil was automated in 1956, Sabre in 1988. The scoring box reduced the bias in judging, and permitted more accurate scoring of faster actions, lighter touches, and more touches to the back and flank than before. Fencing is a combat sport that features sword fighting. The three disciplines of modern fencing are the foil, the epée, and the sabre. Each discipline uses a different kind of blade, which shares the same name, and employs its own rules. Most competitive fencers specialize in one discipline. The modern sport gained prominence near the end of the 19th century and is based in the traditional skill set of swordsmanship. The Italian school altered the historical European martial art of classical fencing, and the French school later refined that system. Scoring points in a fencing competition is done by making contact with an opponent. 
The 1904 Olympics Games featured a fourth discipline of fencing known as singlestic, but it was dropped after that year and is not a part of modern fencing. Competitive fencing was one of the first sports to be featured in the Olympics and, along with athletics, cycling, swimming, and gymnastics, has been featured in every modern Olympics. One of the most notable films related to fencing is the 2015 Finnish-Estonian German film The Fencer, directed by Klaus Haro, which is loosely based on the life of Endel Nellis, an accomplished Estonian fencer and coach. The film was nominated for the 73rd Golden Globe Awards in the foreign language film category. In 2017, the first issue of the Fence comic book series, which follows a fictional team of young fencers, was published by the US-based Boom Studios. There are three weapons in modern fencing. Foil, Epe, and Saber. Each weapon has its own rules and strategies. Equipment needed includes at least two swords, a lame knot for Epe, a white jacket, underarm protector, two body and mask cords, knee-high socks, glove and knickers. The foil is a light thrusting weapon with a maximum weight of 500 grams. The foil targets the torso, but not the arms or legs. The foil has a small circular hand guard that serves to protect the hand from direct stabs. As the hand is not a valid target in foil, this is primarily for safety. Touches are scored only with the tip. Hits with the side of the blade do not register on the electronic scoring apparatus and do not halt the action. Touches that land outside the target area, called an off-target touch and signaled by a distinct color on the scoring apparatus, stop the action, but are not scored. Only a single touch can be awarded to either fencer at the end of a phrase. If both fencers land touches within a close enough interval of milliseconds to register two lights on the machine, the referee uses the rules of right of way to determine which fencer is awarded the touch, or if an off-target hit has priority over a valid hit, in which case no touch is awarded. If the referee is unable to determine which fencer has right of way, no touch is awarded. The epee is a thrusting weapon like the foil, but heavier, with a maximum total weight of 775 grams. In epee, the entire body is a valid target. The hand guard on the epee is a large circle that extends towards the pommel, effectively covering the hand, which is a valid target in epee. Like foil, all hits must be with the tip and not the sides of the blade. Hits with the side of the blade do not register on the electronic scoring apparatus and do not halt the action. As the entire body is legal target, there is no concept of an off-target touch, except if the fencer accidentally strikes the floor, setting off the light and tone on the scoring apparatus. Unlike foil and saber, epee does not use, right of way, simultaneous touches to both fencers, known as, double touches. However, if the score is tied in a match at the last point and a double touch is scored, the point is null and void. The saber is a light cutting and thrusting weapon that targets the entire body above the waist, including the head and both the hands. Saber is the newest weapon to be used. Like the foil, the maximum legal weight of a saber is 500 grams. The hand guard on the saber extends from hilt to the point at which the blade connects to the pommel. This guard is generally turned outwards during sport to protect the sword arm from touches. Hits with the entire blade or point are valid. As in foil, touches that land outside the target area are not scored. However, unlike foil, these off-target touches do not stop the action, and the fencing continues. In the case of both fencers landing a scoring touch, the referee determines which fencer receives the point for the action, again through the use of, right of way. Other variants include wheelchair fencing for those with disabilities, chair fencing, one-hit epee, one of the five events which constitute modern pentathlon, and the various types of non-Olympic competitive fencing. Chair fencing is similar to wheelchair fencing, but for the able-bodied. The opponents set up opposing chairs and fence while seated. All the usual rules of fencing are applied. An example of the latter is the American Fencing League, distinct from the United States Fencing Association, the format of competitions is different and the right-of-way rules are interpreted in a different way. In a number of countries, school and university matches deviate slightly from the FI format. A variant of the sport using toy lightsabers earned national attention when ESPN2 acquired the rights to a selection of matches and included it as part of its ESPN8, the Ocho, programming block in August 2018. Most personal protective equipment for fencing is made of tough cotton or nylon. Kevlar was added to top-level uniform pieces, jacket, breeches, underarm protector, lame, 
and the bib of the mask following the death of Vladimir Smirnov at the 1982 World Championships in Rome. However, Kevlar is degraded by both ultraviolet light and chlorine, which can complicate cleaning. Other ballistic fabrics, such as denema, have been developed that resist puncture, and which do not degrade the way that Kevlar does. Phi rules state that tournament wear must be made of fabric that resists a force of 800 newtons, and that the mask bib must resist twice that amount. Traditionally, the fencer's uniform is white, and an instructor's uniform is black. This may be due to the occasional pre-electric practice of covering the point of the weapon in dye, soot, or colored chalk in order to make it easier for the referee to determine the placing of the touches. As this is no longer a factor in the electric era, the Phi rules have been relaxed to allow colored uniforms save black. The guidelines also limit the permitted size and positioning of sponsorship logos. Techniques or movements in fencing can be divided into two categories, offensive and defensive. Some techniques can fall into both categories e.g. the beat. Certain techniques are used offensively, with the purpose of landing a hit in your opponent while holding the right of way, foil and saber. Others are used defensively, to protect against a hit or obtain the right of way. The attacks and defenses may be performed in countless combinations of feet and hand actions. For example, fencer attacks the arm of fencer B, drawing a high outside parry. Fencer B then follows the parry with a high line repost. Fencer A, expecting that, then makes his own parry by pivoting his blade under Fencer B's weapon, from straight out to more or less straight down, putting Fencer B's tip off target and Fencer A now scoring against the low line by angulating the hand upwards. University students compete internationally at the World University Games. The United States holds two national-level university tournaments including the NCAA Championship and the USACFC National Championships tournaments in the US and the Bucks Fencing Championships in the United Kingdom. National fencing organizations have set up programs to encourage more students to fence. Examples include the Regional Youth Circuit Program in the US and the Leon Paul Youth Development Series in the UK. In recent years, attempts have been made to introduce fencing to a wider and younger audience, by using foam and plastic swords, which require much less protective equipment. This makes it much less expensive to provide classes, and thus easier to take fencing to a wider range of schools than traditionally has been the case. There is even a competition series in Scotland, the Plastic and Foam Fencing Fun League, specifically for primary and early secondary school-age children using this equipment. The UK hosts two national competitions in which schools compete against each other directly, the Public Schools Fencing Championship, a competition only open to independent schools, and the Scottish Secondary Schools Championships, open to all secondary schools in Scotland. It contains both teams and individual events and is highly anticipated. Schools organise matches directly against one another and school-age pupils can compete individually in the British Youth Championships. Many universities in Ontario, Canada have fencing teams that participate in an annual inter-university competition called the OUA Finals.